Philippines on behalf of the U.S. Green Building Council, Missouri Gateway Chapter. Thank you for signing up to participate in the 2021-22 Green Schools Quest. My name is Hope Gribble. I'm the Education and Green Schools Manager for the chapter, and I manage the Green Schools Quest program with the assistance of our volunteer-based Green Schools Quest Committee. Many of this year's schools and mentors have participated previously, though a handful are first-time participants. We have worked to keep both of these perspectives in mind when developing this introduction and the resource materials um, with the goal of getting everyone on the same page and ready to hit the ground running in October. In this video, we'll begin with a quick review of the program basics and a grounding in what is meant by the term green schools. Then, We'll orient ourselves with some initial steps for getting started. The bulk of our time will be spent digging into three noteworthy aspects of this year's program, detailing the structure of this year's quest, which differs a little bit from previous years. We'll look at available resources, timeline, uh, and opportunities to connect. And lastly, we'll touch upon how the Green Schools Quest connects with a separate statewide recognition program called Missouri Green Schools. So let's dive in. Launched in 2013, the Green Schools Quest is an annual challenge issued to K through 12 schools throughout our region to implement student-driven sustainability projects with the help of green mentors. Every school mentor and project is unique some schools enter the quest with a specific project in mind. Others are wide open and invite direction from their mentors. Um, regardless of their starting point, they're all really in a position to take meaningful action towards creating greener, healthier learning environments and communities. Green Schools Quest projects run the gamut from outdoor learning spaces, native plants, food gardens, and stormwater management to recycling and waste minimization, to improved and or environmental quality, water and energy conservation, to the creation of green teams and development of sustainability plans and so much more. Uh, the, beauty, the beauty of sustainability really is that it's so broad, though it can also be helpful to have some general buckets to work from uh, and establish a common definition for what a green school is to serve as a frame of reference for venturing on this path. These three areas or pillars are emerging as a common definition for green schools, which is being used throughout the US and abroad. Green schools strive to reduce environmental impact and costs, improve the health and wellness of students and staff, and provide place-based education leading to increased sustainability literacy. These outcomes are brought to life within a school by implementing practices throughout the campus, which includes the school facility, the surrounding natural environment, and the resources that flow through the school, such as energy, water, paper, and food. The curriculum connecting people, place, and purpose through educational programs during the school day and via extracurricular activities, and the school culture and community, the shared values, social norms, and practices within the school. It can be helpful to think of each of these areas as pathways for infusing your projects into the school. For instance, if the Green Schools Quest project is focused on waste diversion, you can address the campus by placing recycling bins and signage next to all trash cans. The curriculum facet can be addressed by encouraging teachers to work the topic into their curriculum, such as engaging students in a waste audit, introducing books about recycling um, and, the, and the recycling process for younger learners, or arranging a field trip to a local landfill or recycling center. And Lastly, you can engage students in creating a culture in the school where recycling is a social norm through creative messaging, including it in the school announcements or newsletters, or by recognizing individuals who are going above and beyond in the effort. 
again, regardless of the project type, the more of these facets that you can use as pathways, the better. Nearly 200 schools have participated in the Green Schools Quest thus far, and thousands of individuals have been impacted. This year, we have just over 30 school participants, and we are excited to continue to work collectively to build a more sustainable region and appreciate you for being a part of this work. We also appreciate our annual Green School sponsors who support this program and our ability to pass along cash prizes to winning schools. Top of mind right now is likely, how do we get started? Schools and mentors are paired via email at the start of October. When determining the pairings, we utilize information provided from schools and mentors via their registration forms. And we do our very best to match mentors areas of expertise with school project interests. The pairing email includes a welcome letter which outlines the next steps and links to all the program resources in one document. This is something you'll wanna keep handy throughout the quest. Also available are checklists for both school leads and mentors that outline specific steps for getting started, as well as ongoing tasks to keep in mind throughout the quest. Because each school, project team, and mentor is unique, the support that a green mentor provides varies. <clears throat> this year, the additional layers of variability due to the pandemic will further influence how mentors engage. With this in mind, we've created an outline of ways for mentors to engage. And we recommend that the school lead and mentor review these ideas um, and then mutually determine the best form of support that the mentor can provide for this, for this year. A huge thanks again to each of you for your flexibility as we continue to navigate this territory. All right, now we're gonna dig into some of the specifics of the program structure this year. This school year, a hybrid program format is offered. Schools may choose to engage in either the, wh whichever format works the best for them. Um, that we will need to confirm which track they're following at the start of the program. On the registration form, schools indicated their format of interest. If after learning more from this video, your school would prefer to switch program tracks, simply notify me as soon as possible, and you can do that via email. The traditional format is what has, was historically offered um, every year of the Quest since its launch, except for last year. It consists of one comprehensive six-month project. Teams turn in a five-minute digital presentation and written report documenting their process and impact at the conclusion. These are reviewed by a panel of judges and winners are determined in elementary, middle and high school divisions. Those winners then receive trophies and cash prizes. The second option follows an adapted format that was introduced last year in response to the pandemic. And it takes place as themed monthly sustainability challenges. At the end of each month, participants submit a short description and photo of their work and cash prize winners are then drawn at random from the submissions received. The monthly themes in the adapted format are centered around the principles captured here as the rainbow of sustainability. Importance of place is a the theme for October. November is interconnectedness. December is respect for limits. January is systems thinking and cycles. February is social justice and March is global citizenship. Schools participating in the traditional format can also benefit from viewing their projects through the lens of one or more of these sustainability principles. In fact, the evaluation rubric that the judges will use for the traditional format submissions includes the opportunity to earn five points for teams that have explored and incorporated into their project at least two principles from this rainbow of sustainability. The rainbow of sustainability is really a tool for applying the lens 
of sustainability to, to curriculum. Uh, these themes may be explored through existing curriculum by implementing a new project at school or at home and examining how it connects to the monthly themes or by engaging in an activity related to that month's principle as a standalone activity. In a separate video titled Applying the Rainbow of Sustainability, two members of our Green Schools Quest Committee introduce the framework and share examples of how it can be applied. So please be sure to view that video after you finish with this one. As was mentioned when outlining the two program format options, schools participating in the traditional format will prepare one submission packet at the conclusion of the quest in March, which will be reviewed by a panel of judges using an evaluation rubric. The submission is completed via an online form, which is due on March 15th and includes basic school project and project info, um, a one to two page written report. There's no specific format or template that needs to be utilized for that report though uh, we do always recommend that teams reference the evaluation criteria when pull, putting together their reports. A maximum five minute digital presentation and photo release forms for any students pictured. There's also a baseline self-assessment that takes about 30 minutes to complete and can earn you an extra five points. The submission form is live and on our website, so you can access it at any time to see what information is requested. The rubric is also publicly accessible on our website and linked to in your welcome letter. And this just outlines some of the different areas that are being considered um, in that evaluation. $300 cash prizes and trophies will be awarded to winning schools participating in the traditional format in elementary, middle, and high school divisions. In previous years, first, second, and third place winners were awarded in each division. This year, the two separate program tracks that we have spread participants out, resulting in a fewer number of schools participating you know, within each division. That said, one award will be given in the high school category, two in middle, and three in early um, childhood slash elementary, reflective of the ratio of school participants in each division. So we don't have placements, we simply have awards that are given and there are a different number of award, different number of awards in each division based upon the number of participants. Additionally, schools in the traditional format track have the opportunity to win one of five spotlight awards. Recipients of the rookie of the year, Sustainability Champion, Judges' Choice, Innovation, and Focus of the Year Awards each receive $100. Under the traditional formats, the USGBC uh, Missouri Gateway Green Schools Quest Committee designates a particular theme as the focus of the year. Schools have the option of following this particular focus to qualify for consider um, consideration for one of those spotlight awards. But please do note that schools are not penalized if they choose not to focus on the annual theme. It's just an extra option for you. Themes are selected to reflect current issues, both locally and globally, and require a short narrative to be included in the final submission packet describing how the project relates to the focus area. But the 2021-22 focus of the year is health and wellness. And our committee has compiled a list of project ideas and resources related to this theme, um, which we encourage you to check out and consider. For schools participating in the adapted format, no judging will take place. Rather, winners will be drawn at random. Participants receive one raffle entry for each month they turn in a monthly submission form. Three winners of $200 each uh, cash prizes will be drawn each semester. And we will have uh, additional monthly drawings for additional gifts as well. Something new we're introducing this year. For those participating in the adapted format, monthly submission forms must be submitted by the fifth of the following month to be entered into the raffle for cash prizes. 
Um, the form asks for a short description of your work, impact numbers, such as the number of students engaged, at least one image, plus a photo release for any student's picture, and an optional field for um, links to any social media posts about your work that we can share. It is important to note that once a school is registered, they may participate um, to whichever degree works best for them within this adapted format. Um, participants do not have to engage every single month, though of course we encourage you to. Um, but once you're registered, you're, re you're registered for the year and you can just submit forms for each month that you do participate and receive a raffle entry for each one. <laughs> I mentioned uh, earlier that under the traditional track submission material, uh, there is a baseline self-assessment that can be turned in for an extra five points. Schools in the adapted track can also benefit by receiving um, one bonus entry into the raffle for turning their forms in. So if you're, no matter what program track you're in, you can get an extra bonus by completing this Missouri Green Schools baseline self-assessment form. Um, this form is, is a tool from the, Green, uh, from the Green Schools Quest's sister program called Missouri Green Schools, which is a new statewide recognition program currently in its pilot phase. The self-assessment is aimed at building awareness of holistic measures that schools can take to chart a path towards whole school sustainability and it can also serve as a tool for identifying project ideas. Now for the timeline and resources. Here is a snapshot of this program schedule. Um, participating schools will work with their mentors to engage in either their six month long sustainability projects or monthly sustainability challenges from October through March. For those participating in the adapted format, a monthly gift raffle will take place and those $200 cash prizes will be drawn in January and April. For those participating in the traditional format, winners um, will be announced in April after the conclusion of the, of the quest. In addition to the getting started documents that I shared at the beginning of this intro, there are a number of resources available to support teams along their journey, including a list of 101 ways to green your school if you're looking for different project ideas, um, as well as community resources that can be helpful once a project focus has been determined. We've compiled activity ideas and resources aligned with each of the rainbow of sustainability principles, which make up the monthly themes in the adaptive format. And again, these these resources really are applicable to any track you're in, but they're just divided out to make it easier for um, your organization when you think about the monthly challenges if you're in that adapted format. And if you're interested in pursuing a health and wellness focus, we have a compilation of targeted project ideas um, that are surrounding those areas as well. Viewing past submissions is always a great way to gather ideas. We have a number of past project compilations posted on our website and on our YouTube channel as well. The last thing for us to touch upon in this introduction is connecting with Missouri Green Schools. Whereas the Green Schools Quest takes a project-based approach, Missouri Green Schools takes a systems-based approach to fostering whole school sustainability. This new statewide recognition program is co-administered by USGBC Missouri Gateway and the Missouri Environmental Education Association, or MIA. It offers recognition uh, for reaching emerging, progressing, and advanced levels of achievement. It is again in its pilot phase this school year and seeking schools to participate in the pilot. In addition to offering state level recognition, Missouri Green Schools is the conduit for a national recognition program called U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon Schools. The Green Ribbon Schools program recognizes schools across the country that have demonstrated excellence across all three of the pillars that were mentioned earlier. Each state's Department of Education is able to nominate five schools per year to be considered for this 
prestigious award. And since 2016, we have been working together with the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to facilitate this program in the state of Missouri through Missouri Green Schools, again, in partnership with Mia as well. There are four simple steps to sprout recognition. Um, and one is completing the baseline self-assessment that's already built into the Green Schools Quest. Beyond that, a school would simply need to submit a letter of commitment using a provided template, identify at least one goal, which could align with or be actualized through the Green Schools Quest project, and set up an account in the online dashboard that the program uses. Any steps taken to enroll enroll in and be recognized in this additional program can also be highlighted as accomplishments in your Green Schools Quest submissions. So really doubling up and, and uh, taking advantage of opportunities to get recognized through both programs, um, advancing projects through that Green Schools Quest project-based approach, and then wrapping these into a more holistic work within the school through engagement in Missouri Green Schools. Schools with 60% or greater uh, free and reduced priced lunch do receive additional one-on-one -on -one support to navigate the Missouri Green Schools program, set goals and set and track progress. And they have the opportunity to apply for small grants up to $5,000 to implement green projects. Perhaps something to be put towards a Green Schools Quest project. <laughs> um, please reach out to me or visit missourigreenschools.org for more information about that program. This concludes the program introduction portion. Um, now we do ask that you view the Applying the Rainbow of Sustainability video in which two members of our Green Schools Quest Committee introduce that framework and share examples of how it can be applied. And sincere thanks to you for participating. We have Green Schools Quest participant decals and mentor stickers for each of you to proudly display. I'll be sending these out to you via mail and best wishes on all the lies ahead. Thank you so much for your participation and keep in touch with any questions.